Welcome everyone. The meeting is being recorded. So if you would not like to uh, show your face on the recording, please feel free to turn your camera off. Welcome everyone. Uh, I am Anish Kimire. I am a part of Global Student Ambassadors. I use he, his pronouns. And once again, welcome to our event, Community Care Across Cultures. We'll be talking about uh, different different types of um, mental health problems taken, how is it taken in uh, Asian culture and African culture and more about mental health awareness. So welcome everyone, stick around. Let me move to our next slides. And Miles, can you please help me read the next slide? Hello everyone, I'm Miles. Uh, my pronouns is he, he, him, his. I'm part of uh, GSA team. So now I'm gonna read acknowledgement. We would now like to collectively take a moment to acknowledge all indigenous and first people of the land and space in which we live and breathe. For our community at Highline College, we recognize that we are on occupied Duwamish coast Salish, Muckleshoots, and Puyallup lands. And we want to thank all relations and tribes today as we re prepare to hold space at a community. We recognize that all of us are joining this conversation from different areas. So we also want to invite you to reflect that and thank indigenous that and first people of the land and spaces in which you are coming from. Thank you. All right. And if you guys just came in, please use the Google check-in form to check in. So I will put the link in the chat or a few of my friends will put the link on the chat. So you can just use that to check in. And let me move on to the next slide. Imelda, can you help me with this, please? I sure can. Hi, everyone. My name is Imal de Castellano, and I'm part of GSA. And um, I, my pronouns is she, her. We are not professionals in counseling. However, I on this slide, there's information about the counseling center well, with the Zoom meeting ID, as well with the Zoom lobby hours and their number and or email if you guys have further questions or want that professional um, work please don't hesitate and contact them thank you so much Imelda. all right so we will get started with our first question how does your self-care routine looks like so everyone can you guys please go to menti.com and use the code 6503807 the one on the screen and let us know how does your self-care routine looks like All right. The code is six five zero three eight zero seven. Sleep. Wow, that's nice. I usually have a cup of tea and sometimes a relaxing bath. Okay, that's nice. Sour and tea goes really well together. Uh, it, it looks like getting ready for my day. Okay. Always brushing and washing my face the morning, night at around the same time. Okay. A little bit unhealthy. I mean, uh, if you're a little bit of unhealthy is taking care of yourself, eating a lot of good foods that you want. I mean, I don't think it's unhealthy. Relaxing, movies, eating. Okay. I go on walk, sleep, text friends and read. That is so good. Hiking and talking with friends. Hike in nature. Yoga or stretching. Video games. Yep. I can relate to the video games one. 
working out at the gym. That's nice. Isolate. Okay. Sometimes isolating is good, but not all the time. So, okay. Making a healthy meal, drinking a lot of waters, going for a walk, talking with friends. That's good too. Mostly showering and deodorant with some eating. Yep. Running, running while calling a friend on the phone. Uh, stay healthy, reading, hiking, face masks. Okay, that's nice. I'll tell you guys what my self-care uh, routine. I eat a lot, like a lot, a lot. I drink a lot of water and I play a lot of video games. That's my self-care routine. All right, any more guys? We have 17 answers, so let's wait for some more. Our self-care routine. Who's sharing the slide? What was that, Ian? My question is, who's sharing the slide? Uh, I am sharing the slides. Sorry, my Lupe. Okay. All right. I think that's about it. So let's move to our slides. Okay. All right. So what will we discuss today is we'll discuss some about mental health, how to identify mental health. And we are here to encourage about mental health and prioritize mental health more than uh, other things in our life. So let's move on to our next slide. So when we talk about mental health, we, uh, what do people look like who are going through, uh, who have some mental health problems? And how do we talk about it? Let's say if I have something going on, how do I talk about to my friends or to my family or if some of my friends or family have it and they want to open up with me or they want to have a conversation to get through the problem, how do we talk about it when someone else have it and they are trying to make conversation with us? And one thing I really want to focus in this is how mental health is taken in different cultures. As part of a GSA, I am from... South Asia, I'm from Nepal. Uh, my friend Miles is from Vietnam. Our Imelda is from Hispanic culture and Anita is from African culture. So we have a little bit of everything so we can share and let you guys know how is it everywhere. Also, how does our society portray it back home or in our culture? How is the mental health taken? So your mental health is not your identity or, and your chemistry is not your character. This is a fav my favorite quote said by Pastor Rick Warren. He just means whatever we are going through is not our identity. It can be changed. We can be better. We can do better. And let me move on to my next slide. So mental health common symptoms. This is a list of the things that we need to look at to see if uh, we can't see it. So, but we can we can know if we have like change in the sleep or appetite. If I uh, used to eat a lot, but I just don't want to eat anything, or I I'm just always low of energy. I don't have interest on anything. I just lose interest in everything and I can't focus on stuff or I just have difficult time putting pieces together that was not that hard before. And a lot of things like I'm always down and my mood is always kind of off. Like those are kind of common symptoms of uh, mental health. and. If someone you know is going through it, having a conversation with them might help. So let me move on to my next slide. 
so how people think mental health this is i mean if some of my uh, if i saw the tell mental health to people from my culture i probably guess they'll picture something like this but it really is not mental health you can't really see it so how people think it is i'm sorry the caption was off i just turned it off so how people think it is it's like this but how it actually is so here are the pictures that i have put so all of these famous people all across the world have mental mental issues mental health issues so the first picture is of Catherine Zeta Jones. Uh, she is an actress from Wales and she had bipolar disorder. The second man on the picture is, I think we all, all know him, he's Michael Phelps and he have ADSD. He is from uh, here. So, and uh, Demi, uh, Demi Lovato, she has eating disorder, she has a uh, bipolar disorder, and the football player right here is the Brandon Marshall. He has borderline personality disorder as well. And the singer, Sailor Crow, she is struggling with a depression. And our former president of Ron Lincoln, he had a depression too. The truth is the mental health impacts every race, every age, every ethnicity, and every occupation. So like the attorneys to waitress, to doctor, nurse, teacher, everyone goes through it. The problem with this is you just can't see it. You have to sit down, have a conversation, and just talk with people, open up and let people open up. That's what, that's what is so concerning about mental health as no matter how much money you have, no matter how poor you are, you will always go through something. And what you really ne need in that situation is one conversation. One conversation can make you a whole lot better, can make you feel better, can make you do better and actually can make your day better. So let's go to our next slide. So how do we talk about it? This is really important. How do we talk about it? So first thing is just let's start with the text, right? If I can't face to, uh, I can't talk face to face with someone, maybe sending a text would help until I'm comfortable talking to face to face, I can just text my mom or my brother or my friends, letting them know, hey, I'm going through this one, uh, this problem, and I really need someone to have conversation and have someone listen to me. And it would really, really change me just to know that I'm not alone in this one. I have my friends. I have my family to go through it. And sometimes just one conversation, as I earlier said, one conversation will make you feel a lot better. And if you really take a, a step, one step to make a conversation, to open up, you will feel a lot of better just starting conversation the other time. And all of us should remember um, mental health problems are not our choice. It just comes. But the thing is, if we stick together, if we face it, rather than running away from it, we all will overgrow and overcome all the problems we have. We just have to stick together and we just have to overgrow the issue. The other thing is uh, pulling ourselves together when we have some of these problems. What that means is keeping your surrounding and your uh, family, your friends, everything together. So if you just are going through something and you wake up and you don't do nothing, you don't talk to your parents, you don't talk to your friends, you just feel 
hey, no one wants to talk to me and I'll just stay home. No, don't text anybody. Don't talk to anybody. That really does not work. So what, what I want to, I want you to do, if you have some problem, it's just make a conversation, talk to your mom, talk to your dad, just text your friend, say hi. I know with the situation that's been going on in the world, you can't go and hang out with friends, but at least you can FaceTime them or call them and just have a good conversation. And another thing is love and get loved. I have always believed in love. There are many things in the world which can be solved by nothing but love. And what you give is what you get back. And if you give love to a lot of people, that's why you will get back love, a lot of love. Just let love everyone and let yourself feel with, to be filled with love. So let me move on to our next, next slide. What if someone wants to talk about it to you? So in this scenario, you are the one just being there and one of your family member or your friend or your colleague just wants to share something. So first thing is listen. We are way too quick just to reply and just to have, start a conversation. But sometimes the other person who is going through something just really needs an air so they can vent, they can fully tell you what they are going through. And what I mean by listen is let, let them finish their sentences and let them complete their thoughts without you interrupting them. After they finish, you can respond and let them know if you understand. So if someone just had uh, spilled their guts and you have gone through similar thing or you have no someone who went through some other thing and overcome it, let them know. So it helps a lot to know someone like they are not alone. And also make sure you don't like switch topic and go like, hey, yeah, I went through the same thing. Don't make the conversation about you when someone is talking about their problem. Just let them know you went through and you should just reverse back to them and help them to make a better conversation about their struggles and focus on what the other person is trying to say and please do focus on their needs. Also, the very important part is avoid being judgmental. This is a very serious thing. So don't tell them they're being weird or crazy. It's not, it's not helpful at all. So we should start seeing uh, their start seeing them as like they have a problem. It's, it should be you and the person you are having conversation with against the problem that they are going through. It's not you versus the person that are having conversation with you and take them seriously. Cause this thing is like, don't just say like, you're just having a bad week or I'm sure it's nothing like don't demonize them when they are telling you how they are feeling and what they are going through. Also, this is very important part. Make yourself available to talk again if needed. Because most of the time, what I faced in my friend group, like if some of, some of them wants to talk and we all are there when they are sharing their thing in the first time, but for the next time, there is only two or three people. And that, that's really, uh, that's really hard for the people who are sharing their things. So while it can be big relief for someone to share their secret of their struggles that are not usually uh, solved with one conversation. If you let the person know that you are with you and they can reach you out again, if, you, if they are having a tough time, it's, 
okay. It's okay to let them know you're available this time and you are available like uh, after nine because you have class till eight. You can just let them know and you can actually let them know what time you're available to talk and it will be really helpful for the people who are just looking for someone to have a good conversation. And this is another important part. Don't turn what you have been told into a gossip. This, if so, if you did this, the person who trusted you just breaks down even more and ha will have no one to talk to about their struggles. So if someone is talking to you about their mental health, it was probably very tough for them to work out, to have a nerve, to say something in the first place. And if you make it into a gossip, uh, it will just be so sad and heartbreaking for them. And if you don't understand what the other person is going through, you can always say, hey, uh, I really care for you. And let me research more and I will let you know how I can help. If you don't understand, but most of the time, people are just looking for someone so they can share something. So uh, let me just talk about what to say and what not to say, and then I'll move on to the next slide. So on what to say, you can say, thank you for opening up to me. And is there something that I can do to help? And you can also say, uh, I'm sorry, it must be tough, but I'm here when you need me. And you can also say and help them to say, uh, do you need professional help? We can uh, get an appointment to a therapist and I can drive you there. And you can just ask them when you see them or when you are having conversation with them, how are you feeling today? Are you uh, doing good with the problem? Are you okay? Do you want to have a conversation? And there are a few things that you should not say too. And I want to focus on um, why you, what not to say. So some things that you should not say when someone is opening up to you or just deal with it, or it could be worse or, uh, let's say snap out of it like these are the things that will just uh break the guts of the people who are opening up to you and there are a lot of things that i uh, should not say like uh, we all have been there like never say that if someone is opening up to you because although we all have been there the person who is really struggling is the one who needs help. And everyone who have been there got someone help and they are through of it right now. Okay. So according to National Alliance on the men mental health issue, only two out of 10 people get a proper treatment while seven out of them have mental health problems. And this is uh, this shows how how inconfident are we and how our awareness is on mental health issues. And it's okay. It's okay to have a mental health issue. It's not a character flaw. Uh, it it really disrupts day to day life, but uh, these are biological in nature. And mental health issues are more common than people who are left-handed. So there's nothing to be worried about. Also, uh, I also want, you, want to let you guys know, these are not uh, related to person person's character or intelligence because they are biological in nature. So there is... With the mental health issue, there are like disruption in the brain structure and the chemistry. There are a variety of causes. So 
it's okay to have it. We can overcome this. We just have to stick together. And these are treatable. Treatments are very high, highly effective. And yet I got this information from a National Alliance of Mental Health. People will wait 10 years before seeking the treatment. And this is really sad. Maybe due to the stigma. Also, the mental health are as common as dark eyes. So if some of us are going through, the, it's, it's not, a, a not treatable. So we can treat it and we can just make our life much better. And uh, if uh, the treatments are very highly effective and we should educate everyone about mental illness, stop the silence about mental health problems and make it okay. We should talk more about it. We should let the people know that it's okay to go through something and we can overcome it. So this is completely on my perception, mental health on Asian culture. We are uh, less, we are less likely to report mental health condition than other, other people like, so we are like three times less likely to open up. We have a language barrier that's like, I can't say how I am going through or what I'm going through on about myself. And a lot of people in our culture, they really don't want to go to mental health uh, counseling centers because they think they will bring the same to family name, which is really weird because you have to get help. You really have to do get help. And these are like the stigma and the lack of awareness and mental health services in Asia, in my country, especially in Nepal, uh, we avoid seeking treatment or utilizing mental health service. Only some of them are available. Still, we avoid it. And in doing so, our country, Nepal, they just admit the existence of mental health disorder does not, it's not there. There's nothing such as mental health. And I mean, on one part, I kind of get it. We are third world country and we are too busy feeding the hunger, but this thing exists and this should be talked about more and we should get each other help and we should get off the difficulty that we have to treat everything and everyone and make our life better. Now I'll pass it to Imelda to let you guys know about the mental health on Hispanic culture. Hi everyone. Well, for the Hispanic culture, this is just more about myself just because every Hispanic culture does have different traits and have different methods of um, dealing with mental health. But specifically for me, um, I would say I usually keep things to myself, not unless if I have to speak it out to either um, my boss. Um, I rather just speak with um, a counselor than to speak with my family, just because with my family, I don't want to put more burden into them because we just don't know what other people are going through as well. Just as, just as I receive their love and affection, I think that's more than enough for me to keep continuing. And that's pretty much it. And I don't really like to speak to my family in regards about this situation. It will stress them out again, and then it'll kind of put me more down. Instead, I'd rather um, seek for help, like in the counselors, and um, and get myself to talk to them more and open up more to them. I tend to open up more to other people who I don't know than to my family. If you can go to the next slide, Anish. Sure. 
And this is mental health on African culture on Anita's perspective as well. There is stigma of mental illness there, lack of ability to retain mental health professionals, and lack of sufficient allocations of mental health budget. So what I think is as long as we talk about and open up conversation mental health, as Anita mentioned, there is a lack of sufficient allocation on uh, African culture. Same thing with our country. The people that are not ready to admit they are going through something, they will suffer from it, but they will not seek from help. It. And that is not okay. We should seek help. We should solve the problem. We should get over it. We should stick together. That's how we should be. But we are on wrong track. So hopefully someday I can set a light about mental health to my culture and my people because we are backwards in this matter. And this is my one of the favorite code that you don't have to pause. You don't have to be positive all the time. It's perfectly okay to feel sad angry, annoyed, frustrated, scared, and anxious. Having feelings does not make you a negative person. It just makes you human. This is a quote by Lori just saying. So, I mean, it's everything is in the code. You feel angry, annoyed, frustrated because you only human. You live and you learn and you give and you earn that's what it is and we have feelings that's why we are human beings and our feelings should not be positive all the time it's good to be positive all the time but it's perfectly okay to feel the other way as well and that's what makes us human beings and that's what makes us better so let's do one another mentee can you guys please go to the mentee.com and answer this question? How will you open up with the people or make a better conversation to the people who are opening up with you after this event? Is there anything new that you learned? And the mentee code is Be more vocal about how I need support. Exactly. I like that. Yes, we have to speak up. We have to let everyone know what we're going through and we need help. I learned how to make friends at Island and Winter Retreat. Okay. Listen to others without interrupting. Yes, that is very true. We have to let them tell what they want to tell, then only say what we want to say we have to listen first write a note in my bio in social media there exactly i like this thing so i think all of us we are familiar with instagram one of my friends always post a story every single day saying hey this is just a daily reminder if some of you wants to talk i'm here to talk and I was, I always watch his story and I texted him one day, uh, dude, does anyone talks to you? And he said, there are lots of people. I just don't want to tell you who they are because I want to keep it secret. But he gets a lot of texts because he just have his in the story. If anybody wants to talk, I'm here to talk. Let's have a conversation. That is really good way. Mindful listen and so emphatic, value their feeling and let them know their feelings are important value. I agree. We have to listen, we have to let, <clears throat> we have to so empathy and we have to value their feelings. Create positive spaces for people to share. Yes, that is 
True. I will definitely be less afraid to open up to people knowing that there are a lot of people struggle with similar issue. I will also let people know I am here for them whenever they need it. Thank you. And one other thing is everybody cares about you. You don't have to be afraid thinking, oh my God, what will they think if I say I'm going through this? You don't have to worry about it. Everyone care for you. So you can just open up and have a better conversation. Acknowledge that I have a mental disorder and find steps to take care of it, whether through finding support or creating a space where people feel up comfortable enough to open up. That's a very good point. Thank you. Thank you for that. Reach out to the people that I haven't heard from a while. Ask them how they are and let them talk. Tell them I care about them and I'm here to listen and make sure they are okay. That's a very good point too. Sometimes we get caught up in our work and school life too much. We just forget the people around our surroundings. And we just have to say, hi, or how are you? Are you doing okay? That's all we need sometimes. I'm still waiting for more. We just have nine, so. We need to change people's mindset about mental health. Everyone has mental health and life is not going smooth all the time. There are ups and downs and there's nothing to be same of it. Yes, I agree. Everyone goes through at some point. All we need is one conversation. Says someone to hold your hand along the way so we can everyone move away and over the problem. And there's nothing to be same of it. I 100% agree. We just need a good conversation and it just happens. It's not your choice. It's just there. So we have to overcome it. I agree on that one too. So let me come back to my slide. Okay. Uh, I would like to say something before. So if you hear, if you attended the program, first of all, thank you so much. I just want to let you guys know if you know someone going through it or if you were going through it, I just want to let you know you matter. You're valued. And I'm here all the time for you if you want to talk. I just want to let you know you're loved. You're loved by everyone. You matter, you're here for something, you're here to do something. So just be with us, have a good conversation, open up, go tell your mom I love you, because you do. And I'm 100% sure she loves you too. So make a conversation, start a conversation, be healthy, just stay active and don't feel alone because we all are with you and we'll be always with you. No matter... If you can see us right now and meet other people, we are always with you. And I just want to remind you that a lot of people in the world love you and we really care for you. We value you here. And I just want to let you know, just stick together. Whatever you're going through, we'll get over it. And I also want to remind you guys, if you have not checked in, please check in. And let me move on to the next slide. So if you have not followed our call at CLS on Facebook and Instagram, please do do it. And I would like to conclude this event here. If you guys want to talk, the uh, mic is open now. And I really appreciate it for you guys coming here and joining in the event. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, uh, you can just uh, put it in a chat or unmute yourself and talk. And if you have any announcements, please go ahead, unmute yourself and announce some of your announcements. Thank you. Yeah, um, the ICC on November 23rd, we're also going to hold an event. Um, it's called Mental Health in You. 
that we're going to talk about how you can prioritize and manage your mental health, especially in this time with COVID. So that's from 12.30 to 2 p.m. on November 23rd. And it looks like Imelda, thank you for putting that in the chat, um, a link to more info about the event. Thank you. Thank you. Anish, can you send that slide to me to my email? Sure, I will. You have my email? Yeah, I, I have your email. After. OK. You guys are very welcome to have a conversation. Please unmute yourself if you want to say something. And uh, if you want to leave, uh, we did finish our event. So thank you. Thank you again for coming on and sticking with us. I appreciate it so much. Hey, thank, uh, thank you, Anish, for an awesome event and for sharing space with everybody. And thank you, everyone, for coming. I know my screen's a little bit dark. I'm not sure how to fix that. <laughs> Um, but I did want to say that um, a lot of the stuff that we discussed today was very heavy and um, there are professionals on our campus that want to support you. We do have counselors. Um, so I put in the chat their email counseling at highline.edu. If you feel like you need help, uh, please reach out to them and they'll be more than happy, more than happy to uh, connect with you and give you the support that you need. Thank you, Imelda, for sharing that, uh, their other information. Uh, they have a website and they also have a phone number and a Zoom lobby that you can call. And so we just want you to feel that support that Anisha was talking about. And so please reach out to them. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for that. Hi, guys. Um... I just uh, can't turn on the camera, but I want to add and th uh, say thank you that you brought this topic. And um, something new I discover about how different uh, nations, like how they accept the mental health. And like uh, you said, uh, you guys shame of it. We have the same situation in my country. People not really talk about mental health. And um, uh, that's why I'm like people looks very strong uh, outside, but inside they are very weak because they just don't have uh, converse. I mean, they don't really talk about mental health. And um, that point that different uh, different country uh, bring, I mean, talk and don't talk about mental health. It is happening, and it we need to you know to uh, be aware of it more and talk more. And also, yeah, as uh, Maya already to told that our event is coming on Wednesday. So like we will um, continue to talk about mental health because it's, I think it's very important topic right now due, during COVID. And we all experience this, um, you know, some, uh, some depressions or like, some uh, uncertainty or like uh, even financial issues. So like, uh, I'm really thankful that our community uh, talk about mental, mental health and mental issues because it's like, you know, uh, we kind of help each other and it's very matter. Thank you, Alona. I completely agree how the things are in our country but what i feel is most of the places don't want to talk about mental health because they think it's something bad but it really is not it's a solvable problem we can all get through it we just have to talk about it and we have to make mental health just a regular problem not like a, some issue that will bring shame to anyone I hope our next generation as us, we can do that.